Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. I'm Fritz Fowler and I serve here as the lead pastor at Trinity and it is my joy to welcome you this morning to worship. If you are a uh, guest this morning or new to Trinity Lutheran Church, I hope that you had a moment to stop by the welcome table where Miwa was at uh, to pick up your bulletin and your weekly. If you need those, uh, feel free um, to just run out there and to grab them so you can fully well, um, participate in worship this morning. For those of you at home or listening to us on the radio at Word FM, Great Songs of the Faith, a special welcome you uh, this morning to you. Uh, you're invited to head to our website, trinitylandsdale.com, trinitylandsdale.com. Scroll to the bottom of the home page. There's a button there that says bulletin. Uh, there you will find on the first four pages the announcements, or what we call the weekly. And then after that, on the fifth page, uh, begins our worship service. You'll notice that on page one of the bulletin, there is a QR code in the lower right-hand corner. If you are new to Trinity, I invite you to take your smartphone and to scan that QR code. It will take you to our connection card that you can fill out and it'll be emailed to me uh, as soon as you hit submit. On that connection card, you can submit prayer requests. Uh, if you would like a call from myself or another member of the staff, anything that you would like to convey to us, that is a great way to do that. If you're joining us online, I invite you to have your bread, your grape juice, or your wine in front of you, so that way you can celebrate Holy Communion with us uh, during our worship service this morning. You'll notice that the pyramids are now white. This is the first time that they have been white since the season of Easter. Today we celebrate St. Michael, the Archangel, and all the angels. We'll be hearing a little bit about that more during the sermon this morning. Uh, but this is a festival Sunday for us here at Trinity. So we're welcome and glad that you're here this morning uh, to celebrate with us. This morning we begin our worship service with confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin on page two of your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Siblings in Christ, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have baptized to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from our love and loving grace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before we examine ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We give your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our Turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, Savior and Lord. Amen. Siblings in Christ, God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Let us sing together softly into our mask, ye watchers and ye holy ones.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Everlasting God. You have wonderfully established ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as Michael and the angels contend against the cosmic forces of evil, so by your direction they may help and defend us here on earth. For your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God whom we worship and praise with angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from Revelation. A reading from Revelations, the 12th chapter. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of all our comrades has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony for they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath because he knows that this his time is short. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. The 70 returned to him, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from heavens like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. An assembly is invited to seated, and I invite the children to meet me here on uh, the altar uh, for the children's chat. And good morning to those of you who are at home or on the radio listening and watching us. It's good to see you this morning. Uh, and uh, just a moment ago, I, um, I read to you from Luke's gospel, from Luke's letter, and he's talking about how uh, the disciples were filled with joy and went to Jesus and said, look at the things that we can do in your name. And Jesus said, Yes, but you can do even greater things. And that, did you hear what the last line was that I said about your name? What was it? Say that again. You can do greater things, yeah. And your names are written in heaven. Jesus was telling his disciples that because they, they follow Jesus, that their names are written in heaven. And what I love about that passage of scripture is that our names are also written in heaven. Since we are God's children, and we are people of, of, of the resurrection and that uh, we are people um, who follow God, who love God. 
our names are also written in heaven. Your name and my name and everyone's name is written in heaven and that there is nothing, there is nothing that could ever separate us from God's love. That because God loves us and God sent Jesus, our names will always be written in heaven. And that's comforting, I think, sometimes when we're scared or maybe when times we make mistakes or we mess up or the world tells us that we're not worthy, that we didn't earn God's love or we aren't going to receive God's love. The promise is, is that no matter what, Jesus tells us, your name is written in heaven and nothing's ever going to change that. So I want you to be comforted this week and know that God loves you and God will always love you and that your name will always be written in heaven. Okay? All right. So I'm going to invite you just to bow your head if you want, and I'm going to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for writing our names in heaven. Help us this week to share your love with all those that we will meet. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up today, and I hope you guys have a really good week, and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Okay? Thank you. You can go back to your seats. God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you all today on this St. Michael and all angels. I think the first time that I was introduced to angels was by a lifetime TV television show called Touched by an Angel. It was for many years that I really believed that the angels' names were Monica, Tess, and Andrew, the angel of death. I don't know about how many of you, but I can remember watching that television show with like such awe that like, wow, angels are actually really cool. It wasn't for a couple of years until confirmation. I remember watching this as a, as a, as a kid, you know, back in, I don't know, second or third grade and just being in awe of angels. It wasn't until confirmation when you begin to learn more about angels and just exactly how amazing and magnificent angels are. And I think for many of us, if we were honest, we still kind of have that awe when it comes to angels. We still have a lot of questions about angels and what role do angels play in our lives and, 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 and what does scripture have to say about angels because it's not something that we spend a lot of time talking about as Lutherans or as Christians. We, we, we very rarely study the impact and the role of angels. And yet, that's exactly what this feast is called, Michael and All Angels, which is celebrated every year on the 29th of September. Or if you grew up going to church or Catholic, it's also the day of Michael Mass. It's a feast in their church year where people would come together. In the Lutheran church, we call it Michael and All Angels, or Saint Michael, who we believe uh, or traditionally is known as the Archangel who defended heaven when war broke out that we heard about just a moment ago in the book of Revelation. This feast teaches us that there is a vastness to creation that we cannot grasp with our five senses. That when God was in the order of creating, God also created beings that we cannot necessarily see and understand with our five senses. We know that angels are a higher order of creation. They were created by God to serve and to give God perpetual praise. We heard about a few of the angels in our opening, our gathering him, ye watches and ye holy ones, about the seraphim and the cherubim, two kinds of angels or two types of angels that have been created by God. There's a lot of other orders to angels that you can read about and study. Uh, 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 there, there's entire books written about the role that angels play. But I love how Sister Miriam Teresa writes, she's the director or uh, the professor of liturgy at um, uh, Hartford Seminary. She says this about angels, forget their vain pursuit of halo and harp, enough of those larger than life militant seraphim who support our propensity for war. Put aside the hierarchical patriarchal imagery. Angels have something important to teach us about ourselves and God. Angels remind us that our material world is influenced by the world of the Spirit and that we are intrinsically capable of inhabiting both worlds with equal ease. 
Humanity may rank a little lower than the angels because we are flesh as well as spirit. Yet through Jesus, who is God's own word made flesh, we can rise above the angels to share in the very life of God. Look closely and you will see that angels reveal God's secrets. They guard and they protect the vulnerable, are witness to miracles, and are called to unending praise. Today we celebrate not only their achievements, but also that potential in ourselves to be and to do the same. Angels play a pretty important role in Scripture. We first hear about angels in the book of Genesis. After Adam and Eve are, have, have, have um, uh, uh, been kicked out of the Garden of Eden, we read about how God sends a cherubim uh, to guard the garden, and it has a flaming sword that is on fire to keep them out of the garden. We hear about angels at the end of the Bible as well in the book of Revelation and the role that they play in the end days and the time that is yet to come. And in between Genesis and Revelation, there are over 600 references to angels contained in the Bible. And so for us to simply say that angels aren't important or don't exist or uh, uh, the Bible doesn't ever talk about them just is not true. For angels are created by God. Different, only humans are created in the image of God. Scripture does not tell us, tell us that. And as Sister Miriam Teresa points out, as humans because we are made in the image of God and Jesus Christ is given to die for us in the incarnation. We can rise above angels. We, we can be angels in our world today. So I want to set the record clear on just a couple of things. For society also has a view of angels. And so there's uh, um, uh, uh, setting the record clear on just a couple of things. Number one, guardian angels do exist. We're going to hear in just a moment, not only do each of us have guardian angels, but entire nations have guardian angels. Number two, angels uh, um, are, are not these cute little cherubs that you see on holiday greeting cards. Um, cherubs, or seraphim, or the cherubim, cherubim, can actually be six feet tall and look like a sinks with wings if you look at some of the artwork and some of the descriptions found in scripture humanity humans do not become angels when we die it is not theologically correct to say that god needed another angel so god took our loved one from us for humans do not become angels when we die angels do not earn their wings like on the movies regardless of how many times a bell rings does not mean that an angel has received their wings. In fact, there are some angels that do not have wings, and there are some angels that can have up to six or eight wings. The word angel comes from the Greek word angelos, which means envoy or messenger or representative. When the angel Gabriel comes to old Zachariah and Luke to tell him that he's going to give birth to a son and that son's going to be named um, John the Baptist, Gabriel says this, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. It's a pretty good description of what angels do. An angel is a spokesperson, a representative, a messenger from God that can be either human or not. We read in Revelation chapter 2 in verses 1 and 8 and 12 and 18 and in chapter 3 in verses 1 and 7 and 14 that the word angel can also refer to a pastor or a priest for they are also messengers of God. In the book of Hebrews we know that angels are spirits in the divine service sent to serve for the sake of those who will inherit salvation tells us Hebrews 1 chapter 14. Some angels are sent by God like Gabriel was. Other angels are sent by Jesus as we read about in Revelation. But I want to spend a little bit of time here talking about in Hebrews, what is this divine service? What is the divine service that angels are at work about? As I was reading this week and doing some research, there's five principal functions or five roles that angels most often play. The first is that they convey God's commands to us. 
right? They convey God's commands. An angel shows up and stops Abraham's hand before he sacrifices his son Isaac. The angel tells Abraham, you are blessed for your faithfulness to God in Genesis chapter 22. In the same way, we read about how in Exodus, an angel is sent to lead Israel saying, be attentive to him and listen to his voice for my name is in him in the 23rd chapter of Exodus. Secondly, angels announce the coming of special events in God's plan of salvation. Luke 1 records both of Gabriel's announcements. First, about John the Baptist's son, John the Baptist, and second, of Jesus' birth. Another angel announces to Isaac, announces to Isaac, to Isaac and Samson's parents their birth in Genesis and in Judges. An angel comes in a vision to Daniel in his book and to John who's on the island of Patmos in Revelation announcing what was going to be happening. Third, angels interpret events in which God's hand is involved. Angels interpret for us how God is at work in the world. An angel comes to Daniel and to John to help them interpret their visions, the prophecies that they have had. An angel comes to explain Mary's pregnancy to her. We hear about this in the Magnificat, Mary's response to that angel coming to tell her that you are going to bear and you will name this son Emmanuel, which means God with us. That is an angel who comes. Even at the empty tomb, there are angels there on Easter morning who explain to the women how God has ri- how Jesus has risen, how he is no longer dead. Sometimes angels come to explain to us principles of our faith about how God is at work in the world. We believe, though, that probably the biggest or the, 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 uh, the work that angels do Um, the majority of the time, is to protect and assist the faithful. That's where guardian angels come in, is to, there are angels who are protecting and assisting us. In Psalm 9111, we hear these words, God will command his angels to guard you in all your ways, right? An angel comes to Joseph and says, Joseph, take Mary, and take baby Jesus and flee. Run quickly to a foreign land for Jesus, for your family is in danger. An angel comes and feeds Elijah in the desert after someone tries to kill him in First Kings. An angel has to come and release Peter from prison because his preaching has landed him in jail not once but now on two separate occasions and an angel helps him escape prison. I hope this afternoon I don't end up behind bars of the Lansdale Jail for my preaching, but if I do, I hope an angel comes and rescues me, like an angel did for Peter. Not only do we hear about in Bible individuals having guardian angels, angels who come and assist and protect, but we hear how every church, every church also has an angel. Revelation 1 and 2 tells us, Trinity has an angel who protects her and guides her and looks out for her. Every church has an angel and every, even nations have angels. Israel, we're told in the book of Daniel, has Michael as its angel to protect and to guide her. On the subject of angels, Martin Luther writes this, we Christians should have the sure knowledge that the princes of heaven are with us And not only one or two, but a large number of them, as Luke records. A multitude of heavenly hosts was with the shepherds on that night when they were in the fields. And if we are without this custody, the princes of heaven with us, and God did not in this way check the fury of Satan, we could not live for one moment. There are angels who are with us, protecting, assisting, guiding and guarding us. The last function or the last role of angels is not exactly a pleasant one. 
but sometimes it's necessary. Angels are sometimes sent to bring God's displeasure to the faithful when they sin. An angel is sent to Elijah to give a prophecy to the king of Israel when he consults with gods of another religion to tell him, no, 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 that is not how you behave and now you will pay. An angel is sent with a plague after Israel's sins we read about in 2 Samuel in the Old Testament. Related to that is that sometimes angels are sent to avenge those, to, to, to protect those, to uh, be on the offensive of those who have harmed God's church or God's children in some way. Perhaps the most memorable example of this in Scripture is when God sends an angel, sends the angel of death to avenge, to avenge the people of Israel and kills the firstborn of, of, of the Egyptians' sons. For they are not allowing the people of Israel. The Pharaoh does not allow the people of Israel to go free. So you see angels can come at different times and in different places and in different ways. Sometimes angels come to us in dreams like they did for Joseph and Jacob and Matthew and in Genesis. Sometimes angels come during prayer as they did to Zechariah and to Daniel and to Isaiah. Sometimes angels come as a result of prayer as they did to Elisha and Manoah in 2 Kings and in Judges. Sometimes angels come at unexpected times in ways that we did not imagine as they did to Abraham and Sarah when they were going about their daily life. Sometimes angels come at the moment of death as they did to carry Lazarus. Luther wrote this about angels at death. At death, I do not know where I am to go, but my guides, the holy angels, know it well. In 2018, it was the fall of 2018, I had the opportunity uh, to watch the Laramie Project, which was um, at uh, um, the Horizon Theater in King of Prussia. The Laramie Project was based upon uh, that event in October 1998. I was in sixth grade at that time when Matthew Shepard was tortured and uh, um, uh, 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 killed, murdered, tied to fence posts out in that desert in Wyoming. Laramie Project tells the story about how um, uh, 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 when, it was, when everyone gathered together at St. Mark's Church in Wyoming, uh, Fred Phelps, who was the pastor of the Westboro Baptist Church, showed up with protesters outside the church with signs that said, God hates fags and AIDS cures. AIDS cures fags. Matt is in hell. Romaine, one of Matthew's friends, was there at the church and she was reminded of, 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 of the hate and the evil that had happened to Matthew, that that was why Matthew was dead in the first place and said, I have to do something about this. And so when the trial started in April of 1999, uh, Romaine um, uh, uh, founded a nonprofit organization called Angels in Action. There was rumors that Fred Phelps and Westboro Baptist Church would also be at the courthouse to show support to the accusers, to those who had brutally murdered and left Matthew to die in the desert on that cold night. A dozen folks showed up along with Fred Phelps. And again, they held up these signs that God hates fags as they chanted, Matthew is in hell because of his homosexuality. Remain and her angels got to work. They had dressed in these long white robes that were 10 feet tall and that had a wingspan of seven feet. And they got in front of the protesters and the crowd that had gathered to mourn Matthew's death to separate them. You can see this in the documentary or in the play that the angels overcame the evil and the hate with love and compassion and with peace. Remain never under fully understood, she tells in the play, about the impact that these angels in action would have until requests started to flood her email box and through the mail, requesting the, 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 um, 
the kit of how to put together these angels and that you can see if you Google angels in action, how they have popped up over all over the country to protect those who are most vulnerable, to bring this message of peace and love. A few years ago, prior to the pandemic, the angels in action showed up in Center City, Philadelphia, when Westboro was coming in to protest one of the organizations in Philadelphia that cares for the most vulnerable in that community. The good news today on Michael and all angels is, yes, we do have angels who are looking out for us. Yes, Trinity has angels that surround her to protect her from the evil. As a part of our baptismal, we recant, we, we uh, 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 declare sin, death, and the devil as a part of our baptismal vows. But also, as God's people, we are called to be angels in the world. We are called that in the moments of our life where white supremacy, where hate, where patriarchy, where xenophobia, where homophobia are spreading death and destruction and evil, we are called to be angels of peace, to be angels who enter into the lives of others declaring that God loves them and that God does not abandon, that God is not up and far away, but rather God loves God's creation so much that God sends angels, both angels that we can see and angels that we do not see, to protect and to guide and to advocate, to declare a message of God's love, of God's peace to all people. And so this week, how is God calling you to be an angel in the world? Where in your moment, where in your daily life can you show, can you live out a message, not of hatred, but a message of love, a message of welcoming, a message that says you are God's beloved child? And that as I shared in our children's chat, your name is written in heaven that God loves you, that God writes all of our names in heaven, that when God died on the cross for us, it wasn't so a record of wrongs or rights could be counted, but rather that we could be angels to one another. We could be these messengers to one another. And it might not be as public as Romaine's angels in action, and we may not make the nightly news, but we can begin to change the world one person at a time by being that angel, by working behind the scenes sometimes, sharing God's love in the world. In just a moment, in just a moment, you're going to hear me read the preface. It begins with, is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to God. The end of the preface ends, and so with the angels in heaven, with the choirs in heaven, with the cherubim and the seraphim, we praise your name, O God, and join their unending hymn. When we say that, our voices join with the voices of the angels who are gathered around God's throne singing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Know that when you sing that, you, you join with the angels and the archangels, the cherubim and the seraphim, singing that song. And that together, at that moment, with the angels, we become angels, not only to one another, but to the world. Amen. Let us sing together now our hymn of the day.
United with the great cloud of witnesses throughout the ages, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need, concluding each petition with the words, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, for bishops, pastors, and deacons, for all who guide your people and minister in your name for all the baptized sent into the world as messengers of your love. Lord, in your mercy. For our first holy communicants, Nora Dolan and Colin Rutherford, and the newly baptized Liam Weiss and their families, we thank you. May they know you are near. Make them one with all your people. Help them share with others the new life you give them in baptism. In your word, and at your table. Lord, in your mercy. For all creatures, great and small, for animals and fish, birds and insects, for canyons and caverns, deserts and tundra, for lakes and streams, fields and forests, for communities that suffer from drought or flooding, damaging winds or rising sea levels. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations and their leaders, for all who, like Michael, fight against evil and work for justice, for soldiers, peacemakers, and all who defend the rights of others, for those who protect children and vulnerable adults, Lord, in your mercy, for those who face dangerous situations and those who come to their assistance, for those accused of wrongdoing, for those who are fearful and for those who struggle with addiction, for those who grieve and all who are sick, especially Jean, Marlene, Ruth, and those on our prayer list, and for the victims of Amtrak train crash. Lord, in your mercy. For this assembly, for choir members and musicians, poets, artists, and hymn writers, for those who prepare this space for worship, for hospitality ministers, acolytes, and all who offer welcome and hospitality, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have gone before us in faith, especially Walt Rue, Clarence Lee Annis, and Mary Hackett. Gather us with them around your heavenly throne, where together with Michael and all the angels, we will join in singing everlasting praise. Lord, in your mercy. In the company of your saints, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your eternal mercy and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. In just a moment, Daybreak is going to sing with us Psalm 103. If you are part of our online community and you would like to make a gift during this time, you can either scan the QR code that's on your bulletin right there in the margins or head to our website, trinitylansdale.com. For those here in our sanctuary today, uh, you can either um, bring your gift forward uh, during communion. There are brown baskets on each side of the altar rail here on the cushions or place them in there immediately following the service. There are envelopes found in either the pew racks or if you're in the transepts underneath you or right behind you, depending on where you're sitting. We continue by hearing Psalm 103, sung by Daybreak. The assembly is invited to be seated. My soul will 
sing with all the strength I have in me. I will rejoice with every day He gives. I will recall the wonders He has shown to me. His power to heal, His mercy to forgive. We join with angels to sing His praises. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. High as the heavens reach above the earth, is Your unfailing love, is Your unfailing love. For as the east is banished from the west, you took our sins from us, removed our sins from us. How wide, how high is your unfailing love? Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for the heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. If you're joining us at home right now, I invite you to have your elements prepared and in front of you for Holy Communion. For those in our sanctuary, we are going to begin by communing each one of the transepts first. You'll be invited to come forward here on the brown tables. There are individual cups of grape juice or sterile cups that include both the host and grape juice in them. In the bowls, there are gluten-free wafers if you would like to receive those this morning. 
You're also invited to come forward and to stretch out your hands flat. I will place a wafer into the palm of your hand and then to take that wafer to dip it into the cup that does contain alcoholic wine this morning. If you have an individual cup, you're then invited to place it back into the clear bowls uh, that are in front of each pillar there in front of you this morning. Please keep your mask on when you come forward for Holy Communion and step far to the side of the altar rail, staying physically distant from one another so we can protect one another this morning before pulling down your mask and receiving communion. Let us now continue with the great thanksgiving. Siblings in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us now give our let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name enjoying the unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup and gave thanks. He poured it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the blood of my covenant, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Come to the banquet table where Christ himself gives us food and drink. Thanks be to God. The assembly is invited to be seated. For those at home or tuning on through the radio, I now invite you to commune one another with the words the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are alone this day, uh, you are invited to say those words aloud to yourself, knowing that the bread, the juice, and the wine that you hold is the body and blood of Christ. For those here in our sanctuary, as our communion assistants begin to come forward, uh, we do not believe that this is our table, but that it is the Lutheran Church's table. And so all are welcome to receive Holy Communion this morning. If you would prefer to receive a blessing, just let myself know or the other communion assistant know. And we'll be happy to do that to you, to, to offer that blessing over you. We continue by singing the Lamb of God.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen, preserve you, and keep you to a life everlasting. Claim your wholeness, live in forgiveness, dwell in God's amazing grace, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here for worship at Trinity Lutheran. Again, if this is your first time to Trinity, I thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Know that if there's anything that you need throughout the week, that we are here for you. You can call the church office or my email is found on the first page of the bulletin there and the, right in the middle section, there's a note from me. I hope that you take home uh, your uh, weekly, that's the beige colored sheet that has all of our announcements in it. Um, I'm going to cover just a couple of the announcements here, so please take that home, read through that. Uh, there's grief support and there's Bible study happening this week. Uh, there was Sunday school just a few moments ago. All of those details are found in your weekly um, uh, uh, or on our website, trinitylansdale.com this morning. Bethany Christian Services, the Greater Delaware Valley. Um, uh, a few of us met this past week with them to talk about how Trinity can be involved in the refugee crisis uh, that is happening as we welcome uh, folks from Afghanistan and Syria into our region. Uh, there's, we are going to have two informational sessions coming up. The dates, the information, and all of that is found in your weekly or on our website, trinitylansdale.com. Uh, these are just to see who's interested, who feels called to help out, um, and what we can do as a congregation in supporting them. Uh, this will be led here by uh, some folks from Trinity, so please, if you're interested, uh, there's one coming up on a Sunday morning in between worships, and the other one will happen during the week in the evening hours. We're continuing to collect shoes for souls for souls. You can see that the box outside is filling up again. Uh, it'd be helpful if you just tie together the matching pair. I looked in the box earlier this week and found a few lonely shoes that yet haven't found their uh, beloved partner yet. Um, so it helps best if they're tied together or you bring the missing pair in uh, 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 so we can donate those uh, for, to, to the Northeast Philadelphia small little sanctuary village. Harvest Home Food Collection is next week. Please consider donating food uh, to our neighbors. You can bring that food and it will be dropped off in the lobby. There will be a box out there uh, for that. Sunday school classes continue to meet each Sunday. If the weather is favorable, they meet outside. If not, uh, we will announce uh, where those classes, what classrooms they will be in. And Bible, um, not Bible study, Sunday school starts at 9.45 a.m. along with fellowship. Um, on, on uh, Sunday mornings. Finally, my installation, uh, everyone should have received an invite to that, um, will be October 10th at 4 p.m. Uh, please, you only need to RSVP if you plan to come to the reception following the service. Uh, so even if you think you might come, it's hopefully going to be held outside. Please do RSVP so we make sure that we have enough food and hors d'oeuvres for everyone who is uh, coming there. Otherwise, no attendance, uh, no RSVP is needed for the worship service itself. With that, dear friends, I invite you to stand as you are sent out with God's blessings. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together.
Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.